was talking to my brother as I was watching this game, and I said something about how being a Kings fan was going to drastically reduce my lifespan because I just can't handle the stress and tension of watching all these really close, really amazing games. As fun as it is, it's going to kill me one day. And he basically responded saying, well, yeah, but the quality of life of being a Kings fan is infinitely better than any long spanned life without them. And I got to completely agree with that, which is why I'm only going to be better about this game for like five more minutes and then I'm going to move on. It was our first game against the Washington Capitals this season, so our first game against Justin Williams and Mike Richards. I'm not really going to talk about Mike Richards because I'm also still a little bitter about the way things ended with him. But Justin Williams was very bittersweet to see again. He's done so much for the LA Kings organization. He came in and made a huge impact, as he hates to be called Mr. Game 7 Conn Smythe Trophy winner comes in in a clutch and just makes beautiful things happen on the ice, just like he did for the Capitals in the last two minutes of this stupid game. Whatever, Justin. It's fine. So, first period, there was not a whole lot of five-on-five five that was played. Was there any? The Kings basically started with a penalty, and then the Capitals took a penalty, and then as soon as TJ Oshie came out of the box, he ended up behind Alec Martinez, who didn't realize he was there, and spun around and accidentally tripped him. So that was another penalty, and then whose turn was it after that? Then it was the Capitals' turn, then it was the Kings' turn again, but that's where magic happened. Because during this beautiful LA Kings penalty, Andre Kopitar comes up big, earning his $10 million contract, and gets a gorgeous shorthanded goal. I'm also going to mention the fact that this is the East Coast swing that a lot of reporters voting for things such as, oh, I don't know, the Norris Trophy, are going to be watching our team pretty closely, and Drew makes the play of the game right here. His body block and having a stick extended as far as he did, it took away any shooting lanes and it took away any passing lanes and he manages to swipe the puck out of the zone to Dustin Brown who managed to get it to Andre Kopitar who makes this just stunning uh, own rebound. He gets the puck and then the second shot he, he gets at this really odd sharp angle top shelf and bam! The Kings are suddenly ahead one to nothing and we're thinking oh maybe the penalties won't cost us except really we should stop taking penalties because there were too many in this game. And I'm not sure that's what cost us. It was more the second period where we had a whole lot of chances and I mean a lot of chances. We were out shooting them 26 to 12 or something at one point. They were great chances, and the Kings just couldn't bury them. And I remember sitting there thinking, yeah, this is going to bite us in the ass at some point, because it did. Despite all of our wonderful chances and our spectacular goaltending, Jonathan Quick was back. Can't remember if I mentioned that, but it was so beautiful to see him back in net and healthy and making some great saves, and really it boosted the rest of the team. You could tell that they were very happy to be playing in front of him again. And it wasn't even his fault, this this first goal. Uh, it, just an odd angle tip in that he was he was positioned for the first shot and it just kind of redirected and he really didn't have a shot at getting it. So in the dying minutes of the second period, it's tied and I would have liked that cushion. We really turned out to need that cushion because the third period, the Capitals, they came back. They took all of the momentum and they swung it their way. And while the Kings were getting good chances again in the, in the third period, so were the Capitals a lot more than they had been in the first two periods of the game. And it was with two minutes and two seconds left in the game, and that just kills me, that there was the go-ahead goal for the Washington Capitals. There was a scuffle behind the net. Quick is very extended on his, his left-hand side, um, and he's he's completely ready for the puck to come back around and stop it there, except that Justin freaking Williams, thanks for being awesome for somebody else, dude. Whatever, I understand. Uh, makes this great play and gets the puck out to a very, very open Capitals player on, on the right side of the net, and just, I mean, nobody's going to miss that goal. Not even Dwight King or Jordan Nolan, who had some great amazing chances and couldn't do anything with them. It's so frustrating. Uh, the Kings finally pulled quick with maybe a minute to go and the 
the Capitals just kind of played with them. They ended up with an empty net goal with 8.6 seconds to go, and that was it. The first time this season that the Kings have lost two games in a row in regulation. Not really what you want to see, considering how all the Ducks are playing at this point. I don't think it's going to be anything like what happened last year, where we're going to end up knocked out of the playoffs, but our position on top of the Pacific is definitely looking a little scarier than it used to. The cups, the Ducks are coming up fast, and they play Edmonton tonight. Probably by the time you see this, they will have won against Edmonton. So things are just getting a little precarious there at the top. Our nice 10-11 point cushion is, is not there anymore. But we still have two-ish months left to play. Uh, plenty of hockey left and plenty of, of times, chances for the Kings to be able to actually bury the chances they have. Uh, it's, still, it's still a good season. It's still a good season. Just, you know, gonna kill me at some point. It's fine.